Today, we are going to talk about this keyboard. This is the Keychron K2 V2, which is a newer version of the Keychron K2 lineup. The only difference is this is hot swappable meaning madali mo lang mapapalitan yung mga switches kung gusto mo. And let me tell you why it is one of my proud purchases for my productivity setup. This keyboard's base is black and with the aluminum frame with the tint of blue under certain light angles. Pero di mo naman talaga siya mapapansin. Out of the box, it has white and black keycap and orange keycap for the escape key as a default. Meron din siyang extra keycaps for Mac users. I like how it looks. Madali siya nagbamatch sa any color scheme na meron ka on your setup. Also, hindi rin siya masyado nagpa-pop up. So if you plan on bringing this to your office, hindi siya masyadong pansinin. Meron din siyang RGB backlighting with tons of different modes and colors to easily match your preference and the colorway of your whole setup. I personally use the RGB backlighting para mas madali kong makita yung mga characters sa keycaps because I'm just blind like that. This keyboard has a compact layout or a 75% layout which has 84 keys. Just enough to have a separate row for function keys which in some line of work are very needed. I like the size of this dahil hindi siya masyadong kumakain ng space sa desk mat and I really love the extra space. This does not have a numpad obviously which if you are working with a lot of numbers maybe opt for a 100% layout keyboard or get a separated numpad keyboard like this one. For the typing angles, we have the lowest incline which has 6.5 degrees, medium incline which has 8.5 degrees of typing angle, and the highest incline which has 11 degrees of typing angle. Using this with the lowest and medium incline feels like I can't reach the function row without lifting my hand, which I hate. I want to reach every corner of my board without lifting my hand that much. However, using this with the highest incline is just a spot, and if you're using a wrist rest like this one, I go for the medium incline and that's just me. I ordered the variant with the aluminum frame. You can get the one with the plastic frame, which costs less. The aluminum frame contributes to its weight. The one with the aluminum frame does not really flex that much, but if you do, uh, you can hear some squeaks here and there, but that's not how we will be using this keyboard, so it doesn't matter. I got this in Gatoron Reds, which are linear switches. Always love the typing quality of linear reds, but you have red, blue, and brown switches to choose from, and please, please, don't choose blue switches. Blue switches produces really loud clicking noises, which if you plan on bringing that to the office, that's one way to get complaints. Now out of the box, this keyboard came with ABS double shot shine through keycaps, which I think are the only downside of this keyboard. ABS keycaps tends to sound thin, is a cheaper material, and will have shine faster than PBT keycaps. But you can always change the keycaps. Me personally, I'm fine with the ABS keycaps that this keyboard came with. It sound marbly, somewhat clacky, I like it. This keyboard also has 4000 mAh of battery, which in a single full charge can last you up to seven days of usage. Yun lang, wala siyang dongle receiver. So if your PC does not have a built-in Bluetooth, pwede mo pa rin naman siyang gamitin wired. Pero if you want to use this wirelessly, kailangan mong bumili ng uh, Bluetooth adapter para magamit siya. Other than that, hindi ko na alam. This has 5.1 Bluetooth chipset. Very reliable. You can connect this to a Mac and all you have to do is flip the switch on the left side part to Mac OS and the keyboard will reconfigure to a keyboard map of a Mac operating system. Pwede mo siya i-connect up to 3 devices. You can also find the power switch on this part and thank you Keychron for putting the power switch on the side. I really hate flipping my keyboard just to power it on. So yeah, thank you for that. You have the charging slash wired port on the left side as well, which I find the most discomfort from. Yes, it came with an angled USB-A to Type-C, but what if my pre-existing coil cable ka na gusto mong gamitin and straight lang yung sa Type-C na part? Well then, you have to buy this angled adapter to make it possible. The price of this keyboard when I got it sa Lazada was 4,990 which kind of leads on the expensive side pero yun nga, pre-built na siya, plug and play and you can also game with this keyboard, no problem at all. I really love the quality of this keyboard. It feels premium and will get any job done. Typing experience is divine, wala pa akong ginagawang mods dito and hindi ko pa na lulub yung mga switches niya pero gustong gusto ko na yung typing experience niya. Also consider na wala siyang wireless dongle which most of the people prefer. 
Ako, prefer ko rin yung wireless receiver kasi mas less yung latency doon. And with that price, you should be getting premium keycaps. ABS lang ang meron nito, pero marbly pa rin naman yung tunog. Hindi ko alam, uh, ilulug ko pa yung mga switches and imumod ko pa to. I-share ko rin sa inyo yung pinakasantes niya with stock and lubed switches. Yung ABS keycaps lang naman yung hindi ko nagustuhan aside from the charging or wired port sa gilid which is nagagawa naman ng paraan. Pero other than that, maganda naman to bilang daily driver. If you found value from this video, a like will be very appreciated and subscribe na rin kayo. Thanks for watching!